one remark you can be sure of getting sooner or later from a flat earther is the horizon always rises to eye level no matter how high you go and indeed you have the horizon in the center of your view most of the time but does that mean that the horizon always is at eye level? First we have to get our definition straight. When asked for a definition of eye level you either don't get an answer or you end up in a conversation like this. So let me define eye level to avoid misunderstanding. Eye level is a horizontal plane from your eyes reaching in front of you to infinity. Technically this means that everything in that plane lies exactly in the middle of your view. But it does not mean that everything that lies exactly in the middle of your view lies in this plane. Because you could be looking slightly downwards or upwards compared with that horizontal plane. This is the first mistake flat earthers make. Humans have the tendency to look at the horizon especially when they are standing at the seashore because the horizon is the only point at which you can see a stark contrast. And that is the kind of reference point we always are looking for. So most of the time the horizon lies in the middle of our view. Level view is one of the easiest things to establish. Take a carpenter's level, look alongside it and see whether the horizon lies on, above or below your line of sight. A more solid way to do this experiment is looking through a theodolite. This is in fact a telescope that can be adjusted perfectly level and with which you can perform vertical and horizontal angle measurements. Here I show some pictures taken through a theodolite by an experienced surveyor. You can clearly see that the horizon lies beneath the level of the horizontal view. In surveyor's terms horizontal is expressed as an angle of 90 degrees and not zero degrees as one would expect. But Rob Skiba thinks he has a better way to do this. He proposes this experiment. Those of you who are interested in doing so, here's a simple test and it doesn't require that you be a Freemason, a Luciferian, a Nazi, an occultist or an atheist. You don't even need to have a college education or a lot of money. What you need to do is get a long pole that would uh, facilitate putting something uh, up to your eye level. In this case I've got like a 4x4 with a plank of wood on top of it. Make sure the uh, vertical post is vertically level and make sure the horizontal plate on top of it is also level. And then go get some paper towels. Use the paper towel tube. You can even keep the paper towels on it if you want to. But if you have just an empty uh, paper towel tube, uh, you can set on, you know, tape to the top of it and then stand behind it such that your eyeball is looking right through it. And then just look straight ahead through this forced experiment right here that keeps you keeps everything looking straight. And I would suggest you do this at a beach somewhere so you don't have to deal with the topography of the land. You, you know, you're, you're going to know that there aren't any peaks and valleys, mountains and and canyons or whatever in on the ocean. You're going to have a straight flat horizon. And if you do this, you're going to see the horizon is going to be right there. It's going to be right as you're looking through that tiny little field of view through that paper towel tube you're gonna see the horizon is gonna be at eye level. We leave his intro aside where he puts Freemasons, Luciferans, Nazis, cultists and atheists all in the same category showing his re religious bias. It looks like Rob Skiba has serious financial difficulties because the experiments he proposes and sometimes perf performs himself don't cost much more than ten dollars and therefore by definition are rather handicapped as is this one. It is obvious that the paper towel tube 
is much too wide to constrain your field of view to a level where you could see the horizon lower than eye level. The paper towel tube experiment he didn't perform himself. Probably he knew that the outcome would be indecisive at best and contrary to his own beliefs at the worst. But in the case of the horizon there is an experiment that costs even less than ten dollars. For five dollars ninety nine you can download this app. Then you can make the most amazing pictures like these. In these apps the horizontal plane is expressed as an angle of zero degrees. In all these pictures you can see that the crosshairs are above the horizon when the azimuth of the camera is round and about zero degrees. Or that the crosshairs are at the horizon and the azimuth is negative. These observations are all in line with a spherical earth. But they are also in line with a flat earth. On a flat plane you have to look down also, unless the plane is infinite. But if it's infinite you wouldn't be able to see the horizon in the first place. But why is Rob Skiba insisting on the statement that you should see the horizon at eye level? And why does he think that when a spherical earth states that on a flat earth the horizon also isn't at eye level? He suffers from substantial cognitive dissonance. He wants us to do the experiment with the paper towel tube so we can see that the horizon is at eye level. Everybody knows and can see for themselves that that is not true. The visible horizon isn't at eye level. So who is the one suffering from substantial cognitive dissonance? And is this a disorder that can be combined with Dunning-Kruger? I don't know, but it looks like it. This disorder is most concise with some flat earthers who are not interested in measurements with some kind of apparatus or another because they think that a curved lens in the apparatus makes you see something that isn't there and they trust their own eyes far better although their eyes consists of a curved lens itself. And by the way the horizon is still at eye level at five and a half feet and at 28,000 feet because, uh, well, it just is. Some of these people should go in the advertisement business, where they are thinking that the constant repetition of a lie makes it the truth eventually. But here are also some pseudo clever flat earthers who have a rebuttal to this flawed reasoning of Rob Skiba and hurry to the rescue. Because the horizon lies at infinity, you cannot see it due to atmospheric conditions and the limitations of your view. And that's why the horizon you see lies beneath eye level, because the part between the apparent horizon and the real horizon is obscured by the atmosphere. Here we have another example of flat earthers that, in order to defend another flat earther, deny the statements of that flat earther without blinking their eyes. Either we should look at the horizon as being the real horizon, or we should consider it to be an apparent horizon. You can't have it both ways. And it is of course quite easy to defend a position by saying the horizon lies at infinity, so it lies at eye level, but because you can see the horizon, you cannot disprove my statement, so I'm right. By the way, Rob Skiba indicates clearly that the horizon we can see is the real horizon and should be lying at eye level. But let's assume the horizon lies at infinity. What would that look like? In this 3D program I made a flat plane of considerable uh, dimensions. In such a program you can't construct an infinite plane by definition. And then I positioned a camera level at one end. What you see is this, a horizon neatly in the middle of the image, so a horizon more or less at eye level. Now we introduce a gradually increasing amount of mist. Nothing much happens at first, but at this point you can see that the horizon is dropping 
just as fans of the infinity horizon predicted. Also, you can see that the horizon line becomes blurry. At this point, the effect becomes rather spectacular. The horizon has dropped significantly and the horizon line is blurred to a point that it isn't recognizable as such. This last picture shows a mist so thick you can't see anything anymore. This simulation shows two interesting features. First, the horizon drops as the atmosphere becomes denser. Some flat earthers claim this and they are right about that. Second, the distinctive line between the sea and the sky becomes increasingly blurred. This phenomenon presents itself without any doubt and can easily be observed in real life at a hazy day. These pictures from landscapes in China illustrate this effect. According to the flat earthers, who claim this is the reason why we don't see the real horizon, this effect should present itself 24-7. But it doesn't. Look at these pictures of the horizon. A crisp, clear line, not a milky band, not a hazy transition, one pixel its sky, the next its sea. This is a clear indication that we are looking at the real horizon, not a partially obscured one. Some flat earthers will say it's atmospheric lensing and reflection. Well that line of thinking has been thoroughly debunked. At a clear day, at moderate temperatures, the only refraction that takes place will cause objects at a distance to be seen at a higher position than where they are in reality. This refraction is caused by the gradually decreasing of air pressure the higher you go. And light is bended towards the denser material, so it's bended downwards. And when light is bended downwards, the image is displaced upwards. This is a concept that is very difficult to absorb for flat earthers. So, if we find the horizon lying beneath our eye level, then in reality, that horizon lies even lower. And this effect would also present itself on a flat plane. So, the statements that the horizon always lies at eye level, regardless of the elevation of the observer, is not only false, it's also a useless lie that doesn't help the flat earth movement one bit because on a flat earth it is a lie just the same.